Brian Scott with you again today as we study Insights to the End Times to see where we are in God's timetable. And suffice it to say, we're getting very, very close to the end of time as uh, we have studied over the past year. Today, uh, we are looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 once again. Yesterday, we were looking at the fact that there's an onslaught of um, seducing spirits, deceiving spirits, and doctrines of demons that have been released against the church. This goes back to the days of Timothy pastoring the church in Ephesus, and that was in 64 AD. That's only 34 years after Jesus died and went to the heaven, and 34 years after the New Testament church was formed in Acts chapter 2. Now, uh, th this this impact of uh, de of demonic spirits and deceiving spirits and seducing spirits has has uh, is the cause of the problem. Obviously, it's an onslaught. It's an overabundance. It's a last time. It's a last day's effort by the devil, by Satan, to attack the church and Christianity. But what's the effect of this? Let's talk about the effect on a global or national scale to begin with. And here's what I have suggested uh, has occurred. We see a society-wide shift that has occurred to move us away from God's truth, away from God's standards, away from God's morals into a realm of deception where we don't even know we're being deceived. It's had a monumental effect. If you look across North America, uh, we're in Ontario, Canada, and so I'm part of, North, we're part of, Canada's part of North America. When we look at North America, we've seen a society-wide shift to a lower standards, evil standards being quite accepted. Now let's look at the effect personally, uh, because we could spend all day, I don't mean just one session, but all day talking about this shifting that has occurred, but let's look at the effect personally, and here's how I've written it. Christian believers have opened their minds to consider other possibilities. They've opened their minds, they've opened their thinking to consider other possibilities being uh, acceptable. And that's led them into a place where they have accepted and they've embraced some of these doctrines and beliefs that are contrary to scripture, but without even realizing it. They just feel it's the way things have been growing and changing and developing and it's normal and, and that's what we're looking at today. In earlier sessions, we talked about four steps that lead to normalization, where things that are uh, the Bible considers to be outright evil, demonic, um, are, are considered to be normal. Well, that's the effect uh, personally. Now, how do, how do we see that? How's that developed? Well, we now have some terms that have become very common in our society, and they are, they are basically running society today. One of them's inclusivity. And inclusivity means that we have to include everybody on an equal footing. Another one of them is called equality. So we have to include everyone on an equal footing. That may work in society, but when we consider those terms vis-a-vis -vis the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, when we consider them against the Bible, uh, I don't see that uh, being, being acceptable. Now, I know that God loves every person, but he wants every person to be saved. Amen. That's why Jesus came to the earth to save everyone from their sins, not to accept their sins. Now we've heard the, the counter argument that God is love. And because God is love, therefore we have to love those who aren't what we consider to be correct or, or biblically accurate. But this, isn't, it, this is mixed up thinking. This is distorted, this is twisted. That's what these demonic spirits are all about, twisting and, and, and uh, uh, distorting the Bible's truths. So this inclusivity says that we have to accept everybody, no matter what their standards are, no matter what their lifestyle is, no matter uh, what they uh, deal with and do, we have to include them. Uh, not according to my Bible. Here's another illustration. This is diversity that we have to, um, respect diversity. So uh, you know as well, 
I, I'm sure you do, that the Bible in uh, Genesis chapter one, when, when God created uh, Adam, when he created man before he even called him Adam, he was creating man, male and female, created he them. And so we had male, Adam, we had female, Eve, and the, uh, they, they, a man leaves his, his parents and cleaves to his wife. They form a new unit. They, they recreate, they, uh, uh, procreate. They, they have babies. We got two genders, but not today in our society here in, in the 21st century, in the year 2023, we have so many different recognized, uh, genders now that we can't keep up to the numbers. And somebody can be a different gender every day. And as long as they self-identify and self-proclaim, then we have to acknowledge that as being acceptable and we have to respect them and so on. So that's another one of these lifestyle issues that is distorting things and so on. That's the personal effect that's occurring. And that personal effect is really having a detrimental effect in our society today because uh, even when it comes to things like hiring people, we no longer hire on ability, skill, experience. We have to uh, hire on diversity, uh, inclusivity, and other terms like this so that we, we can hire people who have no clue as to what's going on. But because they are of a certain level, or case, or ethnic, race, or whatever, they get the position. Uh, these are perilous times. When Paul wrote a second letter to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, written two years after the first letter, so around 66 AD, Paul said, these last days uh, could be perilous times. That word perilous means exceedingly dangerous beyond comprehension. The only other time in the New Testament it was used, it was the madman of Gadara who was so mad and so, uh, uh, so completely demonic that people avoided his uh, area completely. And when Jesus cast the demons out of that uh, individual, those demons went into a herd of sheep and they went over, or sorry, a herd of pigs and they went over the cliff into the sea. Folks, we are in those perilous times because the cause is, are these demonic spirits, deceiving spirits, seducing spirits, and doctrines of demons which the world has been forcing the church to accept. And unfortunately, the church has basically been willing to do so. That's why there are only eight righteous people in the days of Noah. And that's why there's a lot fewer righteous people than you and I know today. I'll see you tomorrow. I got some really good stuff for you. See you then.